we need to continue to talk about how all this all works. Now, the, initially we were talking, as you remember, about the adrenal glands and the thyroid, how the two are related. And blood sugar relates to the adrenal glands because cortisol is a hormone that uh, deals with stress. It helps your body to deal with stress, but it also breaks down sugar and complex carbohydrates that are in the diet and sugars that are, are, are stored in the liver called glycogen. So we got that part. That's important. And we got the, the next part was the gastrointestinal tract. That's important. And we got the, the fourth part, um, which is the, the liver function. Or I'm sorry, that was the third part. And then the last part was having to do with essential fatty acid meta metabolism, which is basically just looking at you know, the gallbladder, the liver, and the small intestine, and the um, gallbladder, liver, small intestine, and the pancreas, right? So do you see, do you see how that works? And these are all uh, organs or glands that are essentially um, the main organs and glands involved in digestion. The stu I didn't mention the stomach, but I did mention it earlier when I talked about um, tyrosine and iodine being very important for thyroid health, and those two are broken down in the stomach. You can't break down amino acids or uh, proteins into tyrosine without healthy stomach function, and you can't break down minerals that are in your uh, foods without uh, proper stomach function either. And uh, it just so happens that 80% of digestion takes place in the stomach, and lots of Americans are stressed out, and they have uh, poorly functioning stomachs. So you see how a thyroid problem really isn't a thyroid problem after all. It's actually some other kind of problem. The thing I didn't focus on and tell you about was that if a person has this thyroid stress, that stress pattern that, that, that they're, they're experiencing, it's very, very, very common for them to have trouble with their immune system. And the main one of the main defenses for the immune system is the stomach. It's the ability for the, of the stomach to make large amounts of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid metabolism is dependent upon zinc. Zinc is a very important nutrient that is the most common nutritional deficiency in the United States right now. So let me repeat that. The most common nutritional deficiency in the United States, in the United States is a zinc deficiency. So with many of my patients, I really determine in the initial history and physical exam whether or not they're deficient in zinc. I do a zinc taste test, a very simple and expensive test that uh, is part of my initial exam. I don't charge extra for it. And then by determining whether or not they're deficient in zinc, I learn a lot about, you know, is their thyroid functioning properly? Also, zinc is needed to make... Um, Zinc is needed to make epinephrine and norepinephrine in the adrenal glands as well. So, you know, zinc is very important. And if a person is deficient in zinc, oftentimes you'll see little white spots on their fingernails. You see a lot of these things. So it's very common for people with a thyroid uh, condition to have an autoimmune thyroid condition. When they have an autoimmune thyroid condition, the medical community and many of the people in my um, profession as well believe that the thyroid gland is attacking itself, that the, you know, somehow the body's gotten confused and doesn't know what to do, and you know, it's going to attack its own gland, which they call an autoimmune thyroid condition. There's two main, and I don't necessarily agree with that, but you know, I, I try to be as respectful as possible with, of my colleagues and, uh, of course, of the medical profession. So with this autoimmune condition, we're looking at antibodies that can be seen on labs and the two most common autoimmune conditions of the thyroid, and the only really ones, are called either Graves' disease, which is like a hyperthyroidism, or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a hypothyroidism. Now, I, th I think we're really getting close to talking about the labs, um, and, and I'm going to do that with you in a minute. Now, primary th hypothyroidism is, is another thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, the, the reason why the, the autoimmune the immune, um, autoimmune conditions that, that a person might have if they have a thyroid autoimmune condition are so important is because they can be treated. These people can be helped. It's not a hopeless case. 
It's not, it's not like, oh, you have Hashimoto's, oh, there's nothing we can do. <gasps> you know, you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, just take your thyroid medication for the rest of your life. And, you know, we wish you the best of luck. You know, thanks for coming by. Do you have your prescription? Do you have your prescription? Oh, good, good, good. We'll see you in six months. If you need another prescription, let us know, and, you know, we'll, we'll renew your prescription. I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't help it. I've, I've been seeing this for quite a few years now, and it's just not right. These conditions, not only can they be managed through managed health care or whatever, but they can just be reversed. God forbid you actually, you know, yes, I have an opinion, okay? God forbid we heal the person of their health concerns so that they don't even need us anymore, and then they can not have to come in. They can have some other health concern that they might deal with, but but let's get them well. And we can do that by addressing their thyroid condition structurally, chemically, and emotionally, and electromagnetically, and spiritually, and by looking at the other areas of their life, like their relationships, and what kind of food they eat, and what kind of vitamins they take, and what kind of water they drink, and what kind of friends they hang out with. If you hang out with somebody all day long and every day who's telling you you're worthless, good for nothing, piece of, you know, whatever, you're going you're gonna to feel terrible about yourself, especially if it's a family member who you respect or a boss or a coworker, and that's going to affect your health. And so by not looking at that, how are you helping that person? These conditions, people get better. Seriously. Take a look at my test. Um, sometimes they don't. Graves' disease is very, very difficult to manage, and it's essentially a medically managed condition. The person does need to see their medical doctor, who's an endocrinologist, regularly because it's just so serious. Um, occasionally, people do get better, and they don't need any medication or anything, and I've, I've met people like that, and I've known them, and, and, and that's wonderful, but it, it's very rare, to be honest with you. So I, don't misquote me or anything. Getting, getting back to these, um, these conditions, they, they can, they can, you can help these people. Now, if you look at the testimonials that I have on my website at www.triadofhealth.net, or some of the ones that you might find on this um, YouTube page um, under triadofhealth.net um, forward slash user, I'm sorry, um, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash triad of health. If you go there, you can see there's some people that I've, I was able to help, and for whatever reason, um, at the time that they began to see me, they were on thyroid medication, thyroid medications for between um, one year and approximately five years, uh, give or take, uh, you know, about a year. And after three visits with one of these people, um, they no longer needed any thyroid medication for whatever reason, according to them and their medical doctor. Um, maybe I had something to do with it. And then another... <laughs> Another woman, she was using the, the medication for about a year. She was in her 50s, and for whatever reason, she no longer needed her thyroid medication after about eight or nine visits uh, coming in uh, to see me, uh, health care treatment visits. So there's hope, okay? There's hope. You, you, you don't have to buy in to, to the stuff that you're seeing on, the, on, the, on, the, on TV and hearing on the radio and, and listening to from your friends. There's hope. So we need to start to talk about the labs. Luckily, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so fortunate and grateful that Dr. Datis Karazian, one of my mentors, wrote this book called Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms When My Lab Tests Are Normal? That's by Dr. Datis Karazian, um, K-H-A-R-R-A-Z-I-A-N. Okay, he's one of my mentors, and uh, I've learned a great deal from him. And the, the title of the book really says a lot, right? Why, why, why do I still have thyroid symptoms when my blood tests are normal? Why do you still have thyroid blood symptoms when your blood tests are normal? I mean, if the blood tests are normal, shouldn't your symptoms be gone? You would think so, right? Right? But then why would he write the book? This, this book's doing great. I mean, people, people are buying the book. I have it available in my practice, and it really explains a lot. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what he says, not a lot, a little bit, and, and why that is. 